Hey guys, so if you're looking for a DJ controller, then today I want to give you a bit of advice on what to look for and how to make your final decision on what particular DJ controller you end up purchasing and DJing with. Let's get stuck in. Like the video and subscribe to the channel. Okay, so tip number one is to do with the DJ software that you're a potential DJ controller is compatible with. And so the point being is that this is compatible with Rekordbox and certain other DJ brands like Denon, for example, or um, Native Instruments. They have different software compatibility and when you're shopping around, you'll see the, the different software that they're compatible with. So if you're used to using certain uh, DJ software and you like it, it may be the best thing to stick with that. Or, you know, you could be willing to test out a completely new software and get used to that. So yeah, that's just something to be aware of. The next thing is to look out for the amount of channels. So. On this version, this is a DDJ400 uh, by uh, Pioneer, and this only has two channels. The, the DDJ200 has two channels too, and that's much smaller. But as you go up the, the price uh, levels up to the high spec versions, then you'll get more channels. Um, and that allow you to uh, give you more options when you're DJ music. You have obviously have uh, four, four tracks to play with if that's, if that's what you like gives you a bit more flexibility to play around with samples, mixing like three tracks in together. So like two, two music variants or two music tracks with a variant of um, an acapella, say, with, with uh, an instrumental as well. So you, you can uh, go instrumental, vocal, mental. Absolutely. So the high spec version. So I found one here and it's called a, a Pioneer XDJ-XZ or XZ, depending on where you're from in the world. And what's interesting is some of these, the, like this version here, is, is got like digital screens and displays, like it's actually massive, it's four channel mixer, it's massive. Um, it's got like an inverted section here that comes out with a display. Like I said, the, these dials here have displays as well. Um, it's all singing and dancing, like brilliance. Like, it actually helps you out a lot because you can actually see the, the, the countdown to maybe the, the end of the track and things like that. So you don't have to always be like a laptop DJ, you know, just staring at the laptop, picking out your tracks. You can use the dials a bit better. Um, so that, that's one aspect. So it's the features and functionalities, and I suppose it depends on how much you want to invest in in the on the the outset of of this as of a DJ controller as well. One other thing to consider is the the inputs and outputs. So on the DDJ controller here or DDJ four hundred controller here, you only have like RCA and what else is on there? Yeah, that's it. RCA and a USB. Plug that in. You're ready to go. But on some of the the higher spec models, you have in you can have like XLR. Uh, which is a different type of uh, connector cable which you can plug into speakers um, and they also have along the side that is the RCA which is the phono and then some others I believe that have uh, like a quarter inch jack as well so you can put that in plug into speakers. The benefit of that is that you could potentially so if you have two types of inputs you can use both so you can go into the booth monitors so say if I had a speaker here you could plug the RCA into there so you can hear the music really well and then the, the other connectors could go into a separate mix and then there's playing to the audience out, out to some other speakers as well. So I suppose ultimately it comes down to your decision of DJing. So are you in this for like the long haul? You want to become a DJ for as a career? You want to DJ out to crowds and go into the clubs, etc. Then have a think about investing it into a decent level. So I would say like the DDJ 400 is, if you're going down that route of career vibes, you, get, you wanna become a professional DJ and stuff, then like this is probably the minimum. And then, well, cause this does exactly what you need to. That's why I absolutely love this. But then, like I said, if you wanna get like the, the super expensive, nearly, nearly 2000 pound worth um, uh, Pioneer, was it the XDJ-XZ? I keep forgetting what it is. But anyway, it's 
on certain DJ websites is about 1900 quid, right? So you, you'll get everything that you need and more and more. You won't even use all of those features, I, I, I guess, in the first few months, just getting used to like figuring out what it does. But the point being is that invest in now and then you don't have to keep like replacing, selling this one, getting rid of it or whatever. So that's something to bear in mind. So ultimately it comes down to the, your goals as a DJ, longevity uh, and your initial budget that you have available. Last but not least, my advice would be to get some sort of carry case to protect, uh, protect your DJ controller. Um, it's an extra thing to consider. It does add a little bit of extra cost onto, onto the purchase, but to be fair, if you're going about uh, different places to play uh, music and DJ and mix in front of people, then the, having the carry case definitely helps. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Uh, like, and, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Check out beatmatchguru.com, lots of DJing tips, uh, gear recommendations on there as well. So you can check out my recommended gear page. Um, enjoy DJing and see you next time.